I, I'm not actually looking at Bitcoin at all. In three years, Ethereum will flip Bitcoin. This is Anton Bukov, the co-founder of One Inch Network, one of the world's largest decentralized exchanges by transaction volume. He's also number 39 on Cointelegraph's Crypto Top 100 of 2022. Bukov is convinced that fixing Ethereum's scalability issue is key for the success of decentralized finance. What is the best scalability solution for Ethereum? And what are the chances it could replace Bitcoin as the largest cryptocurrency? Find out in our latest Cointelegraph interview. Okay, so Anton, the vast majority of crypto users currently use uh, um, centralized exchanges. So what would it take for decentralized exchanges to take over centralized ones? Uh, I, I think this uh, taking over is already happening. Uh, if you would look at what happened to volumes, to users, to number of trades on centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges in 2020 and 2029, I believe you would see that uh, DEX's growth was much more impressive than SEX's growth. And this is like just the beginning of this uh, taking over. And so maybe you can point out at the, um, the, the improvements that still need to be made in order to complete this process uh, of taking over centralized exchanges. Yeah, I, I believe um, that liquidity is pretty good already. Sometimes we see that uh, for huge trades, uh, uh, aggregated DEX uh, is better than centralized exchanges. Uh, but DEXs still can, can't compete with centralized exchanges uh, for high frequency trading, like for professional uh, traders, professional market makers, like professional strategists, because uh, no one DEX is uh, working like uh, responding for milliseconds. You, you still have to wait for transaction confirmation and even on fastest blockchains, it's like few seconds. Uh, and uh, I, I believe it's like, it will not happen dramatically. It will not be changed dramatically. Uh, I mean that uh, decentralized exchanges, they probably will never be as fast as centralized exchanges. And maybe they should not be. It, it, it's like current speed is enough for users, for traders who are like doing it because uh, it's enough for actual trading. It's just not suitable for high frequency trading. Yeah. There is also another issue, which is the uh, involvement of big, big players into this space. So uh, as far as I understand, big players, big institutional players are not uh, allowed to invest into this kind of uh, technologies because or to, 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 to get their assets into these technologies because of the regulatory issues that they have on their own. So is it not like um, is it not like a big obstacle for decentralized exchanges to really take over the centralized ones? The fact that they cannot access the capital of these big uh, institutions. Yeah, this is something we're going to solve with a thing we recently announced, which called One Inch Pro. This is a service for institutionals, which could uh, allow them to behave as market makers and uh, restrict subset of users who would, will be able to interact with them. Uh, also will allow them to interact as, uh, as, as users and interact with only with services who are like uh, compliant with uh, their uh, le legal uh, documents. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it's like, uh, I heard some people complain like regulated DeFi is impossible. It's like a bad idea and something, but I believe that regulated DeFi is like <laughs> um, DeFi is such a freedom, financial freedom, which allows subset of users to play with self restrictions. So regulated DeFi is only subset of this DeFi for those who want to use it, who, who is required. Yeah, I, I kind of agree that, uh, that the best option would be having all options available. So you can decide whether you want to be, you want to take on the, the, um, the responsibility of, uh, of being regulated or not. And you, you just uh, choose which, which path uh, suits you better. But now I would like to get into the, <clears throat> into your vision for the future of uh, the, 
blockchain ecosystem. So in a recent tweet, you mentioned the risks of cross-chain technology, which have shown vulnerabilities uh, uh, to security breaches. You also shared a statement by Vitalik Buterin, who said the future will be multi-chain, but won't be cross-chain. So do you share Buterin's view on this? All these technologies, uh, which uh, allows cross-chain uh, interoperability, they are highly experiment experimental from my point of view. Uh, in half a year, we saw uh, five bridges were hacked. I also had tweet about this with a list of these uh, hacks on screenshot. Uh, and one billion of US dollars was uh, stolen in, in these hacks. And uh, most of them happened uh, because of uh, low level hacks, uh, low level uh, bugs in smart contracts, uh, which could be uh, prevented by having like uh, more audits. So, and we not yet saw any uh, any attacks on uh, cross chain consensus, like validators consensus or something like this. But potentially we will see this in future. And uh, these numbers, they actually sound horrible because uh, th this one billion from five bridges is, is possibly the hugest uh, piece of pie from all the hacks which happened in a few recent years. So, yeah, I, I think in this case, numbers talks uh, for themselves. Right, but then what is the alternative here? So, um... As far as I understand, uh, there are a lot of people that are uh, dreaming about this uh, future where all uh, blockchains will be interconnected to, to each other and you could uh, move assets from one chain to another freely thanks to these bridges. So do you, you think that this is not a, a basically a feasible project or you have an alternative uh, so that this can happen st with, with, uh, with another system? Uh, I, I would say the main difference between a multi-chain and cross-chain should be that uh, when we are talking about multi-chain, th this uh, means that you should minimize cross-chain interactions and use it uh, when it's like really necessary. It should not be like you execute transactions which uh, have cross-chain interactions every every day, multiple times. For regular user, it should be like they work with some chain and time to time they bridge their assets uh, to other chains. But it's like if you bridge uh, stable uh, tokens like USDC from one chain to another chain, it's safe to have this, uh, for example, any other stable token on one chain or on another chain because this safety is like guaranteed by this blockchain. But if you bridge some like uh, bridged assets, like if you have Ether on other chain, like Ether on Solana, Ether on uh, BNB chain, either on any other chain, it, it should be considered like not really safe because you have one more risk, which involves the bridging of this asset. Because uh, if something bad would happen to this bridge, your Ether, which should be uh, locked on Ethereum side, can be stolen, could be stolen. You said that Bitcoin can become a storage of value, but Ethereum, uh, so Ethereum will be able to become a storage of state. So what exactly do you mean by storage of state? Yeah, I, I mean that Ethereum uh, could become like a global settlement layer for um, different deals, which could happen on other chains, on uh, multiple layer tools and, uh, <clears throat> and any other like environment. Uh, this means that, uh, for example, any layer two, how, how layer two works, uh, they usually have smart contract on layer one on Ethereum mainnet. Uh, and if something bad is happening to layer two chain, someone is trying to manipulate it or trick others, you could provide some proof to layer one smart contract that something bad is happening to this chain. And this smart contract will be able to terminate this chain or fix it. And uh, this is like, you have a separate chain, like separate blockchain, and you can have interactions on it, but it uses Ethereum mainnet as a settlement layer. It, 
it uh, settles um, and finalizes all, all the transactions and everything was happening on it into a Ethereum mainnet. And uh, I, I think this uh, could be expanded to other chains. For example, uh, some chains could uh, store their Merkle roots in uh, Ethereum mainnet to uh, commit to their finality. Mm, that's interesting. So basically, you are more of a supporter of this view of Ethereum as uh, the universal layer one solution for the future of DeFi. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. B because we actually see that a lot of different uh, side chains projects, which are effectively like uh, different chains, uh, they are going into the direction of being layer twos. Uh, they're trying to become layer two to have their uh, like uh, safety model integrated with Ethereum model to like use Ethereum as this settlement layer uh, I'm talking about. Yeah, but on the other hand, we are also seeing a lot, a, a lot, of, a lot of successful projects like uh, Near. You were mentioning we were mentioning before Solana, uh, Harmony. Those projects seem to be like alternative to Ethereum not uh, on top of Ethereum. You may not yes, correct? but uh, I see, uh, as far as I see, some of them already started and trying to become like, uh, to uh, use Ethereum as some settlement layer. I see that there is a possibility that uh, this will not be one, one rank, uh, network of chains they all not like equal they are not like interacting like on the same uh, uh, same uh, abilities they are more like uh, have some kind of hierarchy it's like vision that these different chains could uh, somehow relate to each other by committing their states to like uh, more valuable more uh, like chain which have um, uh, higher uh, like uh, capitalization I would say uh, it's not actually about capitalization it's about uh, power of validators for being non manipulatable yeah and do you think this one this this one chain will be ethereum yeah I, I think that web T is could be still distributed among multiple chains and all these dApps can run on any chains that they want to, but not all these chains are like equal in terms of how they relate to each other. Uh, there is like a high chance that uh, most of the chains will try to commit their states to Ethereum as a higher uh, la layer. One of the main obstacles that still prevent DeFi to be, to from reaching mass adoption is the scalability issues that are affecting the Ethereum blockchain. So that's also what prevents uh, Ethereum from becoming this uh, huge uh, um, settlement layer, I guess, because right now in the, in the current status, Ethereum cannot really play that role because of those limitations. So you said that developers should not wait or prepare for ETH 2.0. DeFi scaling will happen through layer two. So here I'm I'm not sure I understand what you meant. So why why do you think that a layer two solution is unfeasible for for scaling Ethereum 2.0? And if not, then what is your uh, your view on what what can make Ethereum scale? The transaction capacity of um, Ethereum mainnet is limited, but uh, uh, it's it's not enough for uh, current demand uh, and for future demand for sure. And what we are trying to do uh, is um, to scale this demand among like something, H how to scale it, how to uh, allow number of users and the uh, capacity of transactions to be increased like 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times. And uh, I, I see scaling solution in uh, the ZK uh, snarks uh, because uh, the validation uh, complexity is not related to computation complexity. Your two different transactions, like 1 million of gas transactions and 100 million of gas transactions, validation of these transactions on uh, ZK snark rollup would cost you same amount of uh, computations. Uh, that's sounds like magic but that's how it works 
I talked to uh, Vitalik uh, in Paris like half a year ago about this issue that uh, Ethereum is trying to build this sharding since maybe 2017 when they like came up to this idea, maybe even earlier. And while they were like in progress of building it, this DeFi thing appeared with all this composability thing where all these projects can interact with each other. This is the main feature of DeFi. And what we see that this DeFi is absolutely not uh, compatible with this sharding idea. And uh, we will not see DeFi on a sharded environment. I, I talked to Vitalik about this and he like, uh, as far as I understand, he agreed that uh, the only scaling solution we see right now for DeFi is layer two. But actually, this is not like a solving. It's like offloading scaling issue to layer two. So now it's layer two issue to make uh, more scalable. They could provide some uh, performance uh, improvement like 10x, 100x, maybe 1000x, but it will be super hard for them to have 1 million x scaling. Uh, it's like a next gen issue. So for the next 5 10 years, I see DeFi will be atomic and it will happen on, on single shard or on um, this layer 2 or on mainnet. It will not be actually sharded. It will not interact cross shard. All right. Now I would like to get into your vision of Bitcoin because you seem to be rather not not an enthusiastic fan of Bitcoin. In a recent interview, you said that uh, you still respect Bitcoin as a store of value, but you also said that at this point, blockchains with smart with smart contracts make much more sense. So, can you expand on this thought? Yeah, I, I would say uh, Bitcoin or oh, Ethereum already replaced Bitcoin in terms of uh, blockchain for applications. Bitcoin is absolutely not a blockchain for applications. It's not for developers. Uh, you can't develop applications on top of Bitcoin. You could try, but maybe you can develop like some kind of simple logic hash log game. I don't know. The only application which was like built on top of Bitcoin is Lightning Network, but it's not working so good that anyone is trying to use it. Uh, I afraid it became like a meme in crypto Twitter mm. uh, that uh, they're building this uh, Lightning Network for many years, like maybe more than five years. And it's not yet there, like no one is still using it. Looks like people prefer to use Bitcoin for like uh, huge trades, for settlement trades. They're not trying to buy coffee using Bitcoin, especially because Bitcoin is not stable token. Everything you can do with Bitcoin actually is just hold asset. You can buy, you can sell it. Uh, I, you know, I, I respect Bitcoin technology because it was like the invention of all this industry, for sure. Uh, but uh, it makes absolutely no sense for any blockchain developers. Okay, since you are such a strong believer in Ethereum, I guess that you also believe in the so-called flipping, so in the scenario where Ethereum will eventually become the largest cryptocurrency and overtake Bitcoin. I think there is a high chance that Ethereum will overtake Bitcoin uh, in terms of uh, total capitalization yeah fully diluted uh, capitalization maybe i will try to use like a logarithm here and uh, think that in three years ethereum will flip bitcoin thanks a lot anton for being on our show that was a great conversation thank you